Planes are a little tricky to build right in Besiege. This is even more true if you want to build an engine-powered plane. In this video, I want to try making an engine-powered VTOL and see if I can even get it off the ground. So starting down the sandbox here, you can see the first thing I'm doing is building up this plus sign with wood, and on that, I'm putting down some gears. Now I have this sun and planet gear formation here, and you can see they spin the inner gear, how it spins all the other ones. This was the start of the engine that I wanted, and you can see now, I'm actually moving over to one of the smaller gears, and putting down a log. On that, I put down another gear, and as I spin this up now, you can see how that gear moves around. Now, I like the look of that, and you can see next, I put another gear on top of that perpendicular one. And now as I spin this up, you can see how it spins that top gear as well. Now, this might look a little overcomplicated, and it definitely is, but I had an idea of how to turn this into a pretty cool engine. So that looking good, I copied this over to the other side, and I wanted to give it a test. Now, generally, you can see how these two things spin around, but I wanted to delete the two extra gears I had on the side, and this wasn't half bad. Now the final trick here is actually going to be to freeze the two gears on top. Once you do this, you can see as I spin it around how the gears have to move around that frozen gear, and this was what I was looking for. Now I added on some larger gears here, and this should build in a gear reduction. Once I had that, it was almost time to add in the final wheel to put in the last set of gears. And using some steering hinges here, you can see I built that up now, and trying it out, the gears were a little loose, but they did seem to be spinning around at least, so after bracing them all up in place, I added on two wheels on top of those gears. With this, I can add in four springs, and I can very carefully contract each one of them to slowly start moving this around. Now, this was looking like a pretty good start to the engine, but to double the power, I copied this over to the other side. This also made it a lot more consistent, and you can see here I got some pretty good rotation. Now, for even more power, I copied over another set of this, and I rotated it 90 degrees. This means that they'll perfectly mesh into each other, and they shouldn't hit at all. And this was working great, but I did have to manually move it around, which was kind of annoying. So next up, I added in four or ballast, and I also added in a sensor. This sensor is going to detect when a ballast is below it, and if it sees that, with the help of this logic, it should be able to automatically spin it around. And with all that in place, giving it a test, it seems to move around well, and this should work great as the engine of my VTOL. And for additional power, I also realized I could copy the springs over again, and by doubling it up, it goes quite a bit faster. And of course, before I start worrying about a plane, I did want to make sure that this engine had enough power to drive a car. So next up here, you can see I'm starting to build up the frame of that here here, and by adding a couple wheels to the front, and by bracing it all up, it seemed to hold together well enough. So I added some wheels to the back here, and I wanted to give this a test. The engine seemed to be spinning pretty well here, and the car was also holding itself together. So after seeing this, I used a few more braces to hold the whole thing together, but that's when I noticed a small problem. The timing gears in the bottom were kind of bending a lot, and I didn't like the look of that. For a bit more consistency, I tripled up the gear train to make it a lot more rigid, and this helped a ton. Now you can see next, I Copy over some gears to the bottom here, and the engine seemed to be able to drive them. What I was most impressed with was even when the car was pinned in place, it was still able to drive the gear around and fight against the ground. And of course, driving normally here also seemed to work well, so with the proof of concept done, I deleted off those gears, and you can see now I'm adding on a slightly different version of it. The plan now is to use a system of gears to speed up the output so I'd be able to drive a propeller. And testing this now, it was working, but it was also stalling a lot, which I didn't really like. Now, even with some tuning, I did get it working, but I noticed the engine was really struggling to move around, and you can see that here. So I went ahead next, I actually deleted those gear ratios I made, and I put the propellers directly on the output. This was working, but it just wasn't going fast enough, and the propellers were having a lot of trouble. Now, eventually here, I came up with this design, which seemed to work well enough, but the engine was still struggling a lot to move it around. Now, after running out some wheels here and unpinning it, it was pushing it forward, but it was very slow, and once I had this on a plane, I didn't think it was going to be much better. Now, I tried tripling up the propellers here to give myself even more thrust, and this did seem to do something, but it still was going very slow, and I wasn't really in love with that. One thing I was thinking, though, is that the wheels might have been adding a lot of friction, and once I try this in the air, it might fare a bit better. Already letting this go, it seemed to move forward a bit faster, but it immediately flipped over, and I realized some wings were definitely going to be nice. So that's exactly what I started adding in next, and you can see here, I added on two sets on each side, and like 
letting this go now, it was starting to pull itself forward, but it was also dropping very quickly. The weight distribution is also quite bad because the engine is very heavy and really should be on the bottom. Now, I had realized at this point that the way I'm doing this is actually quite inefficient. By putting the propeller straight on the wheels that the springs are on, I shouldn't need any gear reductions at all, and this should make the system a lot more efficient. Now, trying this out already, it didn't seem to be too bad, but I noticed it was stalling a bit, and it seemed to be that the propellers were a little too far out. So after pushing them in a bit further, this seemed to be working quite well here, at least until propellers started cheering off. After some close inspection here, it seems like the two engines are a bit too close together. So I went ahead here, I deleted off some extra blocks, and I pulled them slightly further apart. And trying this out, the engine was going quite fast now, and this seemed to be working pretty well. In fact, putting this on the ground here, you can see that it almost comes off, and it's just barely hovering in place. If it starts to tilt one way or the other, you can actually see the propellers start to throw it off to the side, and this was looking really good. Now, next up, I deleted off some unnecessary gears to save as much weight as I could, and after I did that, I deleted the entire wood system on the bottom. Giving this a test, it actually seemed to be working, but it also was tilting slightly to the side, and I couldn't really figure out why. For now, I figured that if I add some logs on, it should tilt it a little bit more over to the other side, and this seemed to help quite a bit. With four logs here, it almost got it on center, and with two more, it was enough to keep it perfect perfectly level. Now, weirdly enough, this design seemed to be very stable as well, and you'll notice it's not falling over. I'm really not sure it's causing this to be so extremely stable, but you see for about two minutes here, I was able to keep it hovering in the air. Eventually here, I just got tired watching it, and ended up just resetting it. So with the engine looking great, I wanted to separate out the propellers a bit more, and start working on the actual VTOL. You can see now, I used a longer gear train, and after that, I added on some steering hinges. These are going to allow me to tilt one way or the other with this, and allow myself to transfer the power sideways. The way I tried doing this though, you'll notice that it's actually tilted so much that I can see that the gears aren't exactly perfectly meshing. In fact, if I go beyond 45 degrees, you can see the whole thing just breaks off and falls to the side. Now, I'd also notice at this point, one of the propeller blades I forgot to flip properly, and I think that was what was causing it to flop to the side. Trying this out now, everything else seemed to fall off, but at the very least, now I didn't have a tilting problem at all. I also wanted to fix the meshing gear gears next, so I deleted off the steering hinges that I had, and I added some on the outside. This tilts all the gears at once instead of just the two, and with this, I'm able to get it to go slightly off to the left. Now, of course, it doesn't stay that way, though, because again, this thing is self-stabilizing, so eventually it goes right back up the center. At the very least, though, the tilting was working for a little bit there, so with the proof of concept done, I wanted down on the wheels and start working on the body of the plane. Now, already, just these logs was making it too heavy to get off the ground, but you can see here, I am able to slowly move across the surface reasonably well. But at this point, I knew I was going to need quite a few changes in order for this to get off the ground. So what I did here is I added on another attachment point to the middle, and you can see I'm starting to build up the body. I am adding a lot of extra logs on, but you'll see in a second I'm actually going to be replacing these with panels. I was hoping these were going to be quite a bit lighter, and you can see here I just wanted to get the basic structure built so I knew what to do once I added on those panels. And finishing up the tail here, everything seemed to be good, so now I am adding in those final panels. And you can see here, I got the basic shape of the side looking good, so after that, I copied it over to the other side, and also the bottom. Now, I need the basic skeleton that I put in place before, so I'd have something to attach the panels to. You can see now, I'm slowly starting to just build up the front of this, and trying to make it look somewhat like a real plane. Now, I won't go through entirely all the panels, as it does get a little boring, but you can see now, I started to work on the bottom, and after that, I wanted to work on the wing. Now, once I get the sides of the wing in place, you can see I started to work on the top here, and once I had this, it seemed to be holding all together, so I also started working on the back and the bottom. Designing this was a bit tricky because I needed to make sure as the gears rotated, they didn't hit into anything. It seemed to mostly be working here, and once I had this prototype looking good, I added on two extra wooden blocks, and these were to brace everything together. Now again, even this was too heavy to get off the ground, but it was able to move across the surface pretty well here, so I was hoping with just a few tweaks, everything would come together. And for finishing paneling up the back here, it was time to get this off the ground. I started out using 
balloons, but this is very cheesy, and also getting the weight distribution to work was just kind of very difficult. Now, I was thinking next, maybe I could even add more springs on, but this seemed to instantly break the rotors and cause them to collapse. Now, one weird thing about Besiege, that rotating propeller blades around sometimes has strange effects. Now, in theory, I actually should have been able to generate some lift with this, and with zero gravity, I was able to, but trying this out normally, it just fell straight into the ground, and the drag from those propeller blades was way too much for the engine to overcome. Now, one thing I had thought of was actually turning off the collision of all the panels. This does make them massless, but it also makes them behave kind of strangely at times, but it was the key to get this off the ground without using unbreaking or any balloons. Now, this seemed to be flying pretty well, actually, and it only had a few panels fall off after a little while. Now, for turning this into plane mode, I was going to need some sort of wing, so to do that, I added on some propellers inside the cockpit, and once I did that, it should have given me some lift. And in the air here, I wanted to try converting it into plane mode and seeing if it would work. This caused some problems, though, and you'll notice that the plane is pitching up quite a bit before pitching back down. It seems like when I move the engines, it messes with the weight distribution a lot here, so to fix that, I added on some ballast on the opposite side of the rotating pieces to hopefully balance things out a bit. And this was helping, but I was still falling anytime I tried to go too far into horizontal mode. Now, I tried changing out the wood pieces for ballast, and this did seem to have some effect here, and I was able to start slowly going forward. Unfortunately, though, this thing would fall to the side a lot, and I knew I was going to need some sort of stabilization. So for that, you see I started out here by adding in some wheels. These are going to work like reaction wheels, and anytime I spin them up, it should start to rotate the plane. At first, they were going a little too fast, though, and just broke off immediately. With some extra bracing, though, I was able to get them stable here, and trying this out, they really seemed to move things around. In fact, they were way too powerful and moving me way too much. So I lowered the mass of the ballast by 50%, and this seemed to help things out a lot. With this system, I was able to keep myself relatively flat, but I still was tilting from side to side, and I needed a system to prevent that from happening. So on the wood blocks on the inside here, you see I added on another block. On that, I added on a wheel, and this can work as the wheel to tilt me side to side. This one's a little less obvious, but I am able to tilt from side to side here, but with all this extra weight, my plane was really struggling to get off the ground. Now, it occurred to me at this point, I could actually delete off the ballast that I had and just use braces. These braces cause enough drag here that they're able to spin me around and save quite a bit of weight. So with the stabilization system working manually, I wanted to add up some angle meters and have it automatically adjust where it puts me. You can see here after adding two in, it's keeping myself flat and adding two more in, these are going to keep myself from going side to side. Now, I also added on one last wheel and this is to completely rotate me around so I'll be able to go in any direction that I want. Now, in my first test here, it wasn't braced up well enough and you can see it pulled straight out of the plane. This still was working though and I thought it was a pretty good demo to show off what was going on here. But of course, I added on some extra braces here to keep myself fully together and with that, I started to do some test flights here. Now, it was moving up very slowly though, so to save some extra weight, I deleted a few of these wings I put on the back. This helped a bit, but I was also vibrating back and forth a lot here, which was causing a lot of instability. I decided just to live with this though, because saving weight was extremely important. Now, one extra thing I did want to add on though was going to be crossbows. These are super light and they'll allow me to shoot a lot of arrows in one direction. Now, I tried cranking up their strength to 10 times here, but this instantly shot the crossbow off and caused it to break. Now, I just moved it to a different spot and this seemed to fix the problem and you can see now I'm able to get off the ground relatively quickly and of course, I wanted to give it a test here and see if I get over this mountain. It was a bit of a struggle, but I actually did seem to do it and I was even able to get all the way over to this arch. Now, my speed wasn't that fast, and also my propellers were facing almost directly up here, which wasn't the best, but at the very least, this did seem to be working. So after a quick paint job here, I wanted to try a few last things. Now after a bit of tuning, I got it to the point where it could go about 15 meters per second while only losing a tiny bit of altitude, and I'm also able to shoot some targets from a pretty good distance. Now lastly, I wanted to try shooting some of these balloons here and seeing how I could do. Starting on this first one, I got up to a tight within a reasonable amount of time, but once I tried to shoot it, it just ran away from me. Now, I just kept chasing it down until eventually it ran into the mountain and just popped. So, I swung around again and tried to get these two last balloons. These ones didn't seem to run away.
away from me, and easily enough, I popped both of them here. Now, the second balloon was quite a bit below me, and the only way I have to go down is actually just to go forward a lot faster. Fortunately, though, I was able to pop it quite quickly here, and you can see now, I tilted the blades a lot further forward and started to gain a lot of speed. I got up to 30 meters per second here, and I wasn't even losing altitude that fast. Now, I do wish that this thing could have gone forward a lot faster, but if I'm using a spring-powered engine, there's really only so much I could do, and honestly, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. But if you guys have any other ideas for future builds, make sure to leave those down below. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and otherwise, till next time.